today but I just wanted to start this, this afternoon off by hugely welcoming you all. It's absolutely fantastic to see you and to see that diversity. It's, it's really heartwarming at each quarterly partnership gathering to see such a good combination of old friends of the partnership, people who, who have probably bumped into each other many times in the last month or so um, and many new faces, many people we, we don't necessarily know and who perhaps don't know very many other people in the room. So welcome to all of you, um, new and old, and, and, and thank you to At Bristol for hosting us um, so well once again. Um, I'm not going to go through the agenda, it's up there on the, on the um, screen and it's been there for some time, so I'm hoping you've had a chance to have a, have a quick look through it. It's a very, very packed agenda, so we're, we've got some quite high ambitions for the next two hours, so we're going to be keeping things moving along quite swiftly, so please work with us on that. Um, uh, I'm particularly excited about the fact that this is one of our first real opportunities to do some of that fantastic cross-fertilisation work that the partnership is particularly good at, at a quarterly partnership gathering. So we're going to have some of those introductory pieces about what some, of, some updates since the last time we were all together. Um, and then we're going to be focusing on, a, on the theme of food, but very much in that, that cross-sectoral way. If, if we want to have a much more systemic way of, of, of creating a sustainable food culture in our city, we need to think about not just those specific elements of food, but all of the different ways that our food system interacts with so many other systems. And the partnership is so well placed to help those conversations to happen so that we can understand the interactions between resources and water and transport and energy and well-being and health and all of those different things and how they influence different systems. And we're trying that out today by asking all of you with all of your different specialisms and all of your different experience and wisdom to come together and talk a little bit about the impact of, of the work that you do on food and vice versa. So we're particularly excited about this as, as, a, as a, an, a new way of running our quarterly partnership gathering. So we're hoping we'll continue into the future. Um, you're going to hear much more about that. I've just got a few practicalities, all that health and safety stuff. There are, you're very clever people in this room. There are fire exit signs left, right and centre. If the fire alarm goes off, it's not a practice. Please leave that way. The, the loos are out that direction and, and across the top of the stairs. Um, a few thank yous. Um, huge thank you to some of the people who are, um, have got some tables out of the back there. We've got uh, the 91 Ways uh, team who are recording food stories all over the city and would love to hear your stories today. You're going to hear much more about that um, um, a little bit later on, but please do make sure that if you haven't already recorded your food story, please do so um, after the event. They'll stay for a while afterwards. Thanks also to Bristol 2015 team who are here capturing your 20 do 15 in 15, I haven't even got that right. God, how could I have got that wrong? Do 15 in 15 um, pledges out the back there. Again, you'll hear more about it, but please do go and make sure you get that done as well. There are free copies of Resurgence and Ecologist, so thank you to them for being here. They're just to the left um, of the, the coffee area over there. Um, and thanks also to Ecomedia, who once again are recording all of today's um, activities so that more people can uh, learn from what's happening here today. Um, just finally from me, um, can I encourage all of you who are tweeters... I'm expecting a lot from the nature table, a lot of twittering, tweeting, the nature table particularly. Um, um, at B Green Capital, B letter green, green capital. Um, uh, um, at any point today, can you copy us in and, and we'll try and spread the word about what, what you're coming up with today. So thank you again for being here. Um, I hugely welcome you to this space. And I'd like to now um, invite uh, my colleague, Gary Topp, who's um, Development Manager for the Partnership, to give you a bit of an update on what's happening within the Bristol Green Capital Partnership. Thank you. It is, it's conference, it's um, Vicky. It's, um, yeah, it's not Vicky, but Vicky will know. I can't quite remember it. It's got a... Uh, someone's bringing it. Liz has got it there. Yes. So at
think I've just been upstaged by a Wi-Fi code. <laughs> I'm not going to take up too much of your time um, this afternoon. Uh, at the weekend, we had a fantastic um, elderly relative with, her, with us, and um, she was asking what a vlog is as opposed to a blog. And so I tried to explain that. And um, we've been taking um, some very helpful advice from uh, some good colleagues, Becky and people at Copper Consultancy. And they said, Gary, what you need to do around this development piece, which is really not, frankly, the most sexy thing to, send, to share with a group of people, is just keep telling people the story about it. So this is a kind of verbal blog thing. So I'm not quite sure what that's called, but I'm just going to say some stuff. It'll sink in and hopefully tell you a little bit more about the journey that um, uh, I'm trying to help the partnership with at the moment. So the first thing is to thank you very quickly, again, for um, the various forums that you've been in over the last few months helping us to think hard about just how valuable this partnership is um, and to uh, just reflect that all that work you do um, does uh, have real bearing on where we're trying to go. So thank you for that. Um, there's a few phrases that um, I keep throwing out there and we, um, we the CIC director board and myself, keep listening to the echo of them. Um, this city echoes very well. It's small enough that if you say something at breakfast, it usually comes back to you at lunchtime. So, um, we have been trying um, this phrase civil society. The partnership is a civil society organization. Civil society is the best kind of collective noun for non-government, but we're recognizing sometimes people don't fully understand that that means businesses, that means universities, uh, and it means um, that collective non-government voice. We also, and it's on the banners, talk a lot about leadership and influence. I am sure that all of you want this partnership to have leadership and influence. Yep. That's something that you have to work hard for um, and comes in many different uh, styles and formats. We're doing that work. And also this word green that we all love so much, but trying to deepen that into a, a broader understanding of what a sustainable city future agenda really is. Um, we need to keep reminding ourselves that cities um, are such an important uh, uh, unit of citizenship um, increasingly important unit of government um, globally, and there's a bit of a debate going on about devolution, if you haven't picked that one up, um, and that the partnership is really unique in this city, um, uh, and it's an asset that we're going to have to cherish and nurture with some care, and I'm sure that we all believe that. Um, I get asked a lot about this cross-cutting thing, and um, today's a fantastic example of that. Whilst we're here around a food agenda, of course, what we're really here around is the way that those many pillars of sustainable city futures need to come together. And today the lens might be food, but you'll have noticed from the tables that you're sitting at that you're actually going to have to think about that from a number of different other perspectives in a cross-cutting way. Uh, I get asked a lot about um, the purposes of partnerships, and I kind of look at people and go, well, it's not a new concept, you know. Chambers of commerce are well-established, trade associations are well-established, um, and all sorts of other collective action bodies are well-established. What's unique about this one is that we're doing it around that sustainable city futures agenda. And not too many cities are doing that. I certainly um, was invited up to Sheffield last week to their Green Commission. And they are frankly astonished that a number of civil society um, organizations can come together and have these kind of conversations. They see it as hugely positive. Um, I, it's important to say that I think that we still too often think about the city's development debate as a government-only debate. Um, and uh, nobody can deny the massive importance. How could we do this a couple of weeks after an election? Deny the massive importance of government at local, national, and European level, but it's not only a government debate, um, and uh, we do well to remember that. And the partnership, if we get this right, needs to be a very positive counterpoint, so a very positive counterpoint to that government debate. How do we work well together? Um, it's interesting because we always have to talk about the reality of running an organization. And organizations are always proportionally effective according to their resources. And um, we're going to need to work that out. And we've got some good plans and some good conversations going on in the city. This won't really take effect until 2016. There's too much going on this year in case you haven't noticed. Um, and um, what a great thing it is that it's in this city. But um, uh, it's worth just kind of saying that even convening a city conversation like this one this afternoon at its rawest, costs a couple of grand. Yeah, that's what it costs to get people in a room to do things. Um, and we are uh, addressing that resource issue in what we're calling a kind of consortium model, a consortium of leadership organizations, a consortium of delivery organizations, and then this fantastic consortium that you represent this afternoon of, of dozens of people coming together to have um, influence 
and the right kind of thinking um, and activity together. So I hope that's a little verbal blog thing that gives you a sense of where we're trying to go um, and uh, reassures you that all those conversations you've helped us with are going in the right direction. I think I'm on time. So I think now it's joy. Thanks, Gary. Um, perfect. Thank you. I think it was even shorter than that. Perfect. Zoe Sear from Bristol 2015 Company. Thank you very much, Liz. Um, I'm going to talk even quicker than I normally do because I know how short we are of time. Um, I've got 10 minutes. So I could uh, remind you all what we opened the year with the bridge turning green. We had an opening ceremony. We've had Green Youth Day. We've had Fog Bridge. We've done all sorts of things. But instead, I'm going to stay really focused on all the things that are coming up because I figure that's uh, probably stuff you're interested in. So one of our big objectives this year, as you might remember, is behaviour change and helping people in the city understand they're part of something bigger. That's what the D15 pledge button's all about. That's about us having a conversation and making it a bit fun and really easy for people. Um, we've got over 400,000 people living in the city. Many of us already do things to make the city happier and healthier. Are you up for doing something extra this year? So that's um, the rollout of hashtag D15, our D15 in 15 campaign. Um, some quick headlines for you. So, so far, we've got a real button, and the button's been in such demand, we're probably going to have to get another one. Um, and we've got a digital one. So we've had uh, 1,500 clicks of the digital button so far, and 3,000 pushes of the actual physical button. Um, but what's really great for us is we always planned on this being a very um, digitally focused campaign because it's quite cheap. Um, although you know we have a sizable sum to invest in the year, we don't have unlimited amounts. So we've had 78,000 um, hashtag do15 page impressions on Twitter, which I'm reliably informed if you're into that is, um, is quite impressive. Um, so again, you're all encouraged to engage with that and encourage others to engage with it. You can see a quick snapshot here. One of the things we're trying to do to keep the campaign fresh is work with um, local celebrities, people that we can work with as ambassadors. Um, if they're pushing the button and pledging to do something different, it gives us great content to push out across our social media channels. You can see a quick snapshot there of Simon King, Kevin McLeod, um, uh, the captains of the basketball, football and rugby teams, and our own Romy Gill, um, Indian chef there. So... That will be running throughout the whole of the year. And I guess from a marketing perspective, that's our biggest um, campaign. We're then going to not do any more traditional city dressing in the form of bag, uh, bags and flanners, flags and banners. Um, because A, they're not very sustainable. B, we could be accused of greenwash. And instead, we're going to take Do15 out into the 14 neighbourhood partnership areas. Uh, we're working with a team from Young Bristol. They're going to activate the campaign. What you can see here is uh, people pledging, uh, making a big piece of material bunting. They'll be decorating a giant jigsaw. Um, and they'll also be following on the learning that we've learned from the Neighbourhood Arts Programme to actually do other things out there. So if there's a particularly unattractive piece of wall, let's paint a, a green capital mural on it. So that's actually going out across the city, working in partnership with the community rather than doing it to them. Um, those of you who are familiar with the programme will know Green Technologies had a big strand this year. Um, Venture Fest Bristol and Bath is another big event coming up on the 9th of June. Um, it's effectively an innovation and investor showcase being held at the passenger and engine sheds. Um, some great speakers and local companies showcasing what they do in this space, whether that's Airbus talking about the development of their electric plane, um, another local company that's pioneering the way in how you create 3D printed prosthetics that will make them much more affordable to people that need them, or Ventura Consortium talking about driverless car technologies. Um, so that's another big push for us coming up. Um, also at VentureFest will be Crocodile. They're the team that won the digital challenge, which we announced at Green Youth Day. Um, I think we were all quite pleased that this, this project uh, won. This is effectively an app that creates um, a walking bus. So for parents that currently feel they don't have any other options other than to drive their kids to school, if they could walk, this will help put children in touch with other responsible adults in the area. Um, they're going to be demoing it in June and July, piloting it in October and November, and reporting back their findings in December. Um, big highlight of the year is going to be Big Green Week. I know many people in the room are involved in that. Um, at Bristol 2015, we're going to be hosting a further Green and Black debate as part of our contribution on Monday the 15th. And we also host the EU Commission in the middle of the week um, 
to announce the winners of the 2017 award. So we'll be welcoming the Commissioner, the Director General, um, and a number of um, EU delegations here. So busy week there too. Looking ahead to the Harbour Festival, that's when we'll see the next Arts Exceptional Award unveiled, Bristol, Wales. Um, really exciting, locally produced um, installation. The whale tails will be made out of um, locally sourced willow and school kids are getting involved in weaving that. I guess the big message here is about highlighting the fragility of the ocean um, and how at risk it is, particularly by plastics. Um, and we're also working with um, some of the grassroots organisations that have come together to shape City to Sea. It um, be really exciting if we can push for some policy change off the back of um, this activity. You might also be familiar with another Arts Exception Award, Richard Long, um, local to Bristol. This will be a major uh, retrospective of his career. Um, it will unveil a new commission. It's at the Arnold Feeney, and it celebrates his 70th birthday as well. How am I doing for time? Gabbling away, right. Um, Solar Balloon. Um, this has been two years in the development. It will be unveiled at the Balloon Fiesta, 6th and 9th of, uh, of August. So this is going to be the first certified solar aircraft. So it's a bit of a first for Bristol um, in that it will actually be certified to fly. Um, good news is that it's a hybrid, so if the sun goes in, it won't crash and burn. <laughs> so I think everybody's feeling much more reassured about that. Um, and the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed that Arcadia have applied for the site license to use Queen Square for their Arts Exceptional Award um, 4th and 5th of September. Um, this is really exciting for those of us that, you know, quite frankly, I could not face Glastonbury. Um, but this will bring a, a brand new show to a Bristol local audience. We're working closely with the team to build in some family-friendly elements um, and education for young kids, because obviously this is all about reusing decommissioned military equipment, um, creating positive from negative energy. And finally, Theaster Gates um, is a, a world-renowned Chicago-based artist, really exciting um, heavily under wraps at the moment, um, but we're expecting that his initiative will include a public call out for people to get involved, and it's likely to involve the regeneration of um, a blighted part of the city, shall we say. Um, a lot of the year after that builds into taking um, Bristol to the UN Climate Change Summit in Paris. We have a big week of summits in October, focused on city leaders and also businesses. Um, so there's a lot of other business stuff that I'm sure we can um, talk to you about nearer the time. And then there's a couple of strands of activity running throughout the year. So you'll all be familiar, I'm sure, with um, Go Green. Our business engagement being fantastically run by um, Amy, Nina, James and, and colleagues here. So this launched on the 10th of February and we're really pleased that we've got 175 businesses that have created action plans um, and over 800 people are in regular dialogue with the team, which is brilliant. So that seems to be going incredibly well. And as does our lab space, which uh, we're now just about to roll into our half-term programme next week. Um, and we're fully programmed up over the summer. We would love to engage with more volunteers. So if you're interested, even if you've just got a couple of hours, um, that would be brilliant. Um, ongoing throughout the year, this is a beautiful image. These are the five themes of the grants programme. So we've now funded 155 projects across the city, um, which is great. And we're just working through understanding which ones are food related, which are energy, which are nature, and we can share those with you. So we're trying to reach out to all of those grant funded recipients to understand how we can best support them. Neighbourhood Arts Programme. These are the first six artists that have been commissioned um, to deliver projects across the city. The £10,000 commissions, the next eight briefs are out, um, and there's a deadline of the 8th of June, so any, if you know any local artists, might be interested, um, make them aware. And these are some pictures of the Bristol 2015 welcome host. So we have um, this growing, uh, an initiative that Destination Bristol started. We've got people out on the streets talking to people about all sorts of things, based on what I've heard. Um, and we have a lot of opportunities on the Bristol 2015 and Cities of Service site. So um, if you want to get involved, do. And we're also working with Vosca, who are delivering capacity building for organisations that may be new to volunteering or maybe quite advanced as well. So again, let us know if you'd be interested in that. Wow, I've nearly finished. And finally, and by last but by no means least, is the schools programme. And I think this is probably one of the most exciting strands within the year because this will take key stage two learning, so primary school teaching, into schools. 
Um, the face of the programme is Sean the Sheep. I think we'll all be going Sean mad come July. Um, so far, um, just under 4,000 primary school children have gone through the free five workshops, which are themed to our themes for the year. And we're working with schools to sign them up to the, to the programme, so every primary school in the city can do it. It's all free. So we've got 20 schools signed up. We'll be following up um, with all of the others. And we're working on a game, uh, so Sustainable Sean, which is in testing. If there are any people that are particularly into games and apps and want to be involved in that testing, let us know. Um, otherwise, that's going to be launching in the lab on the 11th and 12th of July. There was no time built in for questions, so I'm really sorry if you've got any, but by all means, do drop in and see us um, if you're passing. I'm handing over to Joy. Thank you so much, Zoe. I just wanted to, um, you know, thank you for all that incredible work. There are some really, really exciting things, and don't forget to go to their website and, and check it all out. Are you able to stay for a bit if people do have questions? No, but your team are. But the team are at the back there, so uh, if you have any extra questions, do go and find them. So, um, as, as Zoe said, um, next up we have Joy, who's going to take us through most of the rest of the session. Thank you, Joy. Thank you. And can I, can I start off by saying a big thank you to Vicky and the, the partnership team, and to all of you for coming along today, because we're going to talk about food. Um, and I'm, I'm so grateful that we've had this opportunity to share this work. So why are we talking about food? It's because we're working on a good food action plan, um, which will be for the next three to five years. It builds on all these projects that Zoe mentioned have been funded this year, 2015. It's been led by the Bristol Food Policy Council, which we'll hear a little bit more about in a minute, and by Bristol Food Network. And it's all about bringing together all the different work that's going on in the city. So it's based on the framework and vision of the Good Food Plan, which was launched in um, 2013. And by doing this more detailed action plan, so this is about who's doing what, by when, and, and how do we know what changes are going to happen, it's going to enable Bristol to apply for a, a silver award for a sustainable food city award. And a little bit more about the purpose. Why do we need an action plan? Well, because food is everybody's business and nobody's. There's no leadership on food. We have a great food policy council, but generally food befores between all the nets. So if we want to be a sustainable food city, like if it, with transport or energy, we need a strategy and we need an action plan. And that means putting together all the different activities and actions that are going on around the city, but also identifying gaps and, and planning ahead and being able to measure change, changes that we really want to see. So a little bit about who's involved in food. Okay, so there's no one leader, but the main stakeholders perhaps are here. We are the Bristol Green Capital Partnership. And we've had a food action group that's been meeting for the last year. Then we have a food policy council. Bristol was the first city in the UK to establish a food policy council. And we have Bristol Food Network, which is a wide network which brings together a lot of the community-based food projects around the city and is also home to the Food Connections Festival. Again, food is not a new topic for Bristol. In fact, you may not no, but Bristol was one of the first cities in the UK to establish a food links project within the city council. The legacy of that is the farmer's market in Corn Street on Wednesdays. That was the second only farmer's market to be set up in the UK following Bath. Um, during 2004 onwards, there's been a lot of work around school meals and public procurement, kind of on the quiet, but that's been going on here in Bristol. 2009 was quite a busy year. We had the peak oil report commissioned by the Green Capital Partnership. Um, the Bristol Food Network itself wrote a strategy to try and inform itself about what we need to do on food. And the City Council, while they couldn't adopt that strategy as their own, they created a food charter. And that has been a very important thing because that has become like the default guidelines for work around food procurement. And then in 2011... <coughs> the Who Feeds Bristol baseline study was published. The Who Feeds Bristol study looked at how food gets onto our plates. It's all about understanding how sustainable and how resilient is the food system that serves the city. 
in the context of national, of course. And they were, it looked particularly at strengths and vulnerabilities and came up with recommendations for action. And these are them up here on the screen. Um, and there are eight themes in there. So the first is about transforming food culture. So that's about growing food, cooking fresh, seasonal, well-produced food from scratch, making sure that kids are eating well in schools, etc. So culture, making sure that people can afford and have access to good food. Then our high streets, the economy, it's really important to have healthy high streets, not dominated just by a few businesses. So diversity of food retail was the second theme. The third theme is about safeguarding land for food. The fourth is about increasing urban food production and distribution. So taking urban agriculture seriously, it's not just about growing a few veg. Actually, it can be careers, it can be commercial. It, there are many different formats for that. The fourth is around, or is it the fifth now? Um, redistribute, recycle, and dealing with wasted food in a good way. And really looking at composting issues, as well as getting food into the hands of, or well, out of landfill. The next one is around infrastructure. So that's a bit of a heavy word, but that th means things like wholesale markets, street markets, abattoirs, dairies, veg packing centres, etc. So the practical stuff, transport routes, the practical stuff that we need in order to be able to have food from as close by as possible. And then increasing markets for local and regional producers. We only have a connection with our farmers in our areas if we, if we buy their produce. So finding ways to enable them to sell into the city is really important, whether that's school meals or street markets or shops or other methods. And finally, recognising that community-led trade and community business models are just as, as important. They are actually part of the food economy. That could be community-supported agriculture, farms, it could be buying groups and cooperatives, it could be pop-up markets, etc. So I'd just like to invite Angela to come up and join me for a minute and say a little bit more about the Food Policy Council, which is our, our leadership group on food. Thanks, Joey. My name's Angela Raffle. I'm a public health doctor. I've lived and worked in Bristol since 1985. I've been a member of the Food Policy Council since it began in 2011. At that time, we had the Bristol Food Network. We just had Joy's report, Who Feed Bristol? But the Green Capital Partnership was quite nervous about food because there were big conflicts going on around supermarket planning permissions, um, all sorts of conflicts there. A bit unaware, I remember going to a brilliant um, Green Capital gathering hosted in the new building for the Environment Agency. Anyone here from the Environment Agency? Uh, in its first week of opening, perfectly exemplary in every way. Walk past the cafe, entirely tins of Coke and packets of crisps. Um, so food was just invisible as an issue that had anything to do with sustainability. And also we were riven with these artificial dualisms. I remember sitting in this room at the launch of Green Capital next to the chief exec of Bristol City Council, who said to me, we can't do anything around local food because we're a fair trade city. So people set up these artificial things... <laughs> And um, so how did we create a vehicle to take forward the system approach that the Who Feeds Bristol was telling us that we should? So we looked around the world, we consulted with Bristol Food Network, we set up the Food Policy Council. Nobody asked us to, nobody told us to, nobody paid us to. Um, it has worked behind the scenes and been part of the pattern. Amy from Green Capital Partnership, Amy Robinson was a member from the start and now Nina is. That relationship has been absolutely key um, it has hosted annual events and special immersion events where we've taken people for a kind of experience around food, hosted by, for example, Yo Valley and that kind of thing. And gradually, gradually, and we did a food poverty report and various other things, a key thing was shining a spotlight on what is the system aim for our food system, because people never really look at the deep system aim. And we redefined it as good food is food that's tasty, healthy, affordable, good for nature, good for workers, good for animal welfare, and good for local businesses. So that's the hallmark of good food. Don't just tell me that healthy foods means bottled fizzy drinks with artificial sweeteners instead of sugar. You know, we have to look at the whole system. 
So we've been chaired by Kevin Morgan from Cardiff since we began. He's now been spotted by Europe and borrowed. So we've lost him as our chair nearly. I've been nominated as vice chair. So if you fancy being chair of the Food Policy Council, there is a vacancy. Um, nomination forms are on our website. And if you want to find me to chat about it, 30th of May, Saturday, I shall be at the community farm, which is one of our community farmer days. Thanks, Joy. Thank you, Angela. So the, the Food Policy Council is a stakeholder group of people from different parts of the food system, and very specifically so, including business, including community, including academics, including health, including the city council. And in, in 2013, the Good Food Plan for Bristol's vision document was launched. So we've done a lot of work. We're not starting from scratch on a, a good food action plan. We have key themes, and the next stage is to really develop these. If you're interested in understanding a little bit more about the, what the Food Policy Council has done, have a look on the website, foodpolicycouncil.org, bristolfoodpolicycouncil.org, and there's a little three-minute animation about what good food means. Angela mentioned the whole food system, so just in case you're not familiar with what that means in the world of food, we're talking about the farmers' production, the processing, manufacturing companies, or the artisan bakers and um, butchers, the distribution systems, the shop owners, the retail, those who cater, prepare meals, whether it's in hospitals, schools, events, whatever, and then through to waste. So that whole cycle. And within that, community is right at the very heart because food is ultimately about people, isn't it? Um, and linked with that, it's about land use, it's about who the businesses are, successful business models, and it's about understanding what foods are produced within our region, what staple foods are actually within reach that we could be actually providing a market for. So that's just a quick whistle-stop tour. Here we are now, um, about to go into this next session. So this, these are all the different theme tables. So it's food and transport, food and resources and waste, food and nature, etc. So we, between us, as Liz has already said, we, we very much represent this multi-stakeholder group looking at food. And I thank you in advance now for being willing to do some quite hard work because we're going to have some short sessions at the tables. Please, if you don't feel you're at the right table... Um, take a look and find one that you feel suits you. Otherwise, stay put and don't be swapping tables too much. So the purpose of the discussions now is to think about how food relates to your particular theme, your particular area of work and expertise. And we would like to invite you to feed that into our work to develop this action plan. So there are pieces of paper on the table. We've got table hosts everywhere. Thank you in advance to the table hosts. Their job is to make sure those pieces of paper get filled in and that no one person dominates discussions. So if you can really work hard as teams, we need your information. It's really, really important. This is the one opportunity we have to speak with all of you. So thank you again for being willing to work with us on this. So we're going to have three tasks. And I'll come back each time to introduce each one, but just so you've got the lie of the land, the first one is thinking about existing actions that are already going on in relation to your food theme. So let's take um, transport and food. What's happening in transport that relates to food? And I'd like you to take five minutes before you start just to all reflect on how your theme does relate to the food system and relate to creating a more sustainable food system. So how does transport relate? How does nature relate? Etc. So the existing actions, and then I want us to think about what should be happening and isn't um, gaps. And I, want you, I would like to ask you, please, don't be blue sky visionary. I want this to be realistic. So this is visionary, but let's keep it very real. So what needs to happen in this city that isn't? And the third thing, we'll be talking about what changes we want to see. So this is an action plan that looks at three to five years. So what changes, tangible change, do we want to see in our city in relation to food in three to five years' time? So that's the three tasks you'll be doing. Just to remind you then, the elements of the action plan are around transforming food culture. So that means 
affordable food, food that's accessible to everybody, healthy food, good education, engagement in involving everybody, a very cultural angle. And then linking culture through to economy is this area of procurement and catering. So restaurants, hospitals, schools, making sure we've got good food sourcing and, and that waste has been dealt with well in those situations. Then moving into the economy, we need a vibrant, diverse, sustainable food economy. So I've already mentioned independent retail, community-led trade, the wholesale and retail markets, new market opportunities. And then land, physical now. We're talking about the physicality of the environment. What are we doing with our land? We need to safeguard land for food. And through good planning, planning I'm taking in its very broadest sense here. And then scaling up this opportunity to produce food in the city and to distribute it commercially. And then really looking cleverly and smartly at our waste, closed loop systems, using that what comes from wasted food and food waste, and, and really looking at that again. So these are our key themes in the action plan. But park that now, because I want you to think about what matters to you, where your expertise lies, what your theme is, and how that relates to food. So, in a minute, I'm going to ask you all to introduce yourselves, host to introduce themselves, and then take five minutes to just clarify how your theme links with food. And then the task is on the tables to think about what you're doing. If it happens that on your table nobody is doing anything on food, please take more time really to think about the connection between your theme and food and, and actually what, what could be happening. And just, just write some notes on that down. Where Just make a note that it's not activities, but that's what you've done. So... We're using food metaphors here. Harvesting is the first one. And this is about current and planned activity. So what are you, what's your organisation currently doing on food or you're planning to? And we need you to write down your details there. And also, if you know of any other organisations that aren't here that you really think should be logged, please write that down. So you have now 20 minutes. Are we on time? 25 minutes? Okay, so a quick why your theme relates to food, how it relates, and then the task, and, and then we'll call time. Thank you, everybody.